Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I want to start talking about factor of safety, 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 safety. Um, it's a pretty important concept in engineering, and so it deserves its own video for show. Um, basically, when we have any type of member in a structure or a, a frame or a machine or whatever, anything that's made out of a material and has some dimensions, it's going to have an ultimate load. And that basically means the ultimate load is just the load that when a member is subjected to it, it will either break or it will not be able to carry that type of that magnitude of load again in the future. So basically it's like it's it, it's uh, capability to carry such a large load will be reduced and in, in the future it will break under that load basically. And that's obviously not a very good thing if we're thinking about bridges or aircraft components or things like that. And when a member is being subjected to its ultimate load, the, uh, the stresses that are developing inside that member are, uh, are what we call the, uh, the ultimate stresses. So just when the ultimate load is applied, we're experiencing the ultimate stress. So when we design structures uh, or, or components and structures, uh, we actually design them to carry to carry allowable loads that are significantly smaller than the the ultimate loads. For example, you might have a rod um, and it, it could have a an ultimate shearing stress of like uh, 300 MPA or something like that. Um, we're not going to allow uh, this rod to get subjected to 300 MPA. We might we might allow it to get subjected to 150 MPA. Uh, and that would give us a safety factor of two because the ultimate load is twice as large as the allowable load, for example. So when we're designing structures, the, the allowable load that we design for is, is just called the allowable load or sometimes it's called the design load. And uh, we leave in a, like a really big buffer for what this, uh, what this member is actually capable of supporting uh, for, for safety because we, uh, we don't want bridges collapsing if we're getting, if we're, if we're getting too close to the ultimate loads. Or, you know, we don't want aircraft falling out of the sky or, uh, you know, because a component snaps or something. Um, or even, it's not even, doesn't have to be just bridges or, or airplanes. Even just imagine a stool in your house. Um, if uh, stools in your house will support different sizes of people. And uh, it's not like if a, if a larger person sits on the stool, it breaks. It's because it has a factor of safety that some engineer somewhere has probably thought about and uh, said, you know what, we should make this stool super strong so it doesn't break when someone sits on it. Um, so that's kind of uh, just a simpler example of the factor of safety. Um, so the ratio of the ultimate load to the allowable load is, is what we call the factor of safety. Or sometimes you'll see it as the factor of safety is also the ratio of the ultimate stress to the allowable stress because they are proportional to each other. So let's, uh, let's take a look here at this example and let's say that you're told that this rod here has an ultimate shearing stress of, uh, let's say, 100 megapascals. Um, in, in mechanics and materials, you'll always be given the ultimate stresses if, if you need them for the problem, because these are determined actually from laboratory experiments and have to do with the properties of the material themselves. And uh, we, we use them in the design to make sure we don't uh, create an unsafe design. So we got a, an ultimate shearing stress of 100 MPa. And let's say our maximum allowable load here is uh, is five kilonewtons. Uh, so we want to figure out what is the factor of safety for this situation. Well, we need uh, we need to find the shearing stress that uh, that is being caused by this applied load because this is our allowable load. Then the corresponding shear is the allowable stress. So we have uh, the formula for this is just the applied load or the allowable load over the cross-sectional area of the rod. So first of all, let's figure out what the cross-sectional area is. So we have, um, let's just write it down here, area is going to be equal to pi r squared. And so we get pi and our area is six millimeters squared. So we get six millimeters squared and that works out to be 113.1 millimeters squared. So when we go and plug that into our uh, shear stress calculation here, we have five kilonewtons 
over 113.10 millimeters squared. And that gives us uh, 0 0.0442, 0 0.04. For two kilonewtons per millimeter squared. Now, if you've been watching the last couple of videos, I like to convert this to newtons per meter squared. So this is uh, we multiply this by a thousand, and we get this is equal to forty-four point two newtons per millimeter squared. And newtons per millimeter squared is in units of megapascals already. So this is equal to 44.2 megapascals. That is the that is the allowable shear force and also the shear force that is or sorry the allowable shear stress and uh, that is the shear stress that is caused in this member in the rod when we apply the maximum allowable load which is 5 kilonewtons. So if we go and plug these into our factor of safety formula down here we have ultimate stress which is 100 MPa And we also have our allowable stress, which is 44.2 MPa. MPa. And uh, when we just divide 100 by 44.2, we're left with 2.26, and that is our factor of safety. So you can see that you know if this if this worked out to be 50 MPa and it was exactly half of the ultimate stress, then, uh, then we would see that we have an ultimate, uh, then we have a factor of safety of two, but because it's a little bit less than half, we get a little bit more than a factor of safety of two. And also you can, you can take this and you can work it backwards into the, uh, into the equation for the ultimate load, because we know the allowable load is five kilonewtons. Uh, we have the factor of safety now, which is 2.26, and if you just rearrange that equation, you'd find out that the ultimate load uh, would just be 2.26 times 5, uh, which would be 11.3 kilonewtons. So you can kind of work between these two equations, um, but like I said, factor of safety is super important, and, uh, and there you go. Now you know how to calculate it.